Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel and Doris of Aldi Books channel. This is the latest in an ongoing series of discussion videos that we've been making this year of the Faber 90 single story bound volumes of stories in commemoration of Faber's 90th birthday. And next up is John McGairn's The Country Funeral. We've had a spate of real duds recently, so fingers crossed that this one goes better. With a name like John McGairn and his reputation, I'm optimistic. But we'll get to my first impressions in a minute. First, let's talk about the man. Born in 1934 in County Leitrim, if I'm pronouncing that right. Ireland died in 2006 in Dublin. He wasn't very old. He was only 71. His most famous novels are The Barracks, The Dark, Amongst Women, and The Observer. But... Jason Harrigan, new to Booktube, just a breath of fresh Irish air on Booktube. You must check him out. Uh, he told me that The Pornographer is one of his best, so there you go. And he also told me that short stories were not McGarren's forte, so I will definitely go on to check his novels, even if I don't end up liking this. I, he's also quite well known for his memoir, all will be well and I just picked that up a few weeks ago because it featured prominently in Ian Lee's collection of memoiristic essays Dear Friend and I picked it up for that reason. His mother died when he was only 10. His first wife was Finnish. His second novel The Dark was banned for pornographic content. Okay that's going up to the top of my TBR and Oh, he lost his job and moved to England and w w worked a variety of odd jobs. He suffered consequences from that and eventually returned to Ireland, lived and worked on a small farm in County Leitrim. I have read the first 20 pages and I'm optimistic, but I'm not wowed. This is a story about a sad little family in Dublin, but the mother's roots go back to a small town called Gloria Bog. She is old and uh, has a lot of health problems, virtually bedridden. Don't know exactly how old she is, but she's probably not young. One of her sons is home from Saudi Arabia. He works for five months and comes home for three weeks or something like that. And he's home. This is a park. I have to let the kids play. That son doesn't sound like he's very, uh, he doesn't, I'm not endeared to him. He's, he is a bit uh, of a sad sack himself. He has moments where he seems like he might be nice, but other times where I don't really like him. And then another son who is a double amputee in a wheelchair. And I I'm not really comfortable with how unpleasant of a character he's made out to be. I just don't like that. Like, I don't want all my disabled characters to be nice, but I, you know, if you're gonna put one disabled character in a story and he's grumpy and hard to get along with, it doesn't, I don't love that. But withholding judgment till we get to the end. This was not a great idea. I thought this would be the one place around my neighborhood that would be kind of quiet because I didn't think anybody knew about it. Waiting them out, waiting for them to leave. I'm getting hotter and hotter in the sun. I thought today would be cooler, but... Their uncle dies back in their mother's hometown and they have very unpleasant childhood memories of this uncle who they haven't seen for 20 years because he became such a curmudgeon and such a bastard that they just stopped visiting. But they have big memories of their childhood spending like their summer holidays, like more than two months every summer with him. And he was so mean to them. And he has died. Their mother, his sister, is not well enough to go, but they go. And there's a third son that we didn't even hear mentioned until they picked him up to go to the funeral in a rented Mercedes. And 
the story ends, they're reminiscing about him, and it sounds like there was some nuance to his character, but so far, I'll, this is a story about a poor old woman that didn't have a happy life, and three men, I haven't got a sense of the youngest son, John, yet, but three men that are kind of not very nice or not very pleasant to read about, so I'm not really sure. I'm curious about the mystery. I think there's some secrets that are about to be revealed, Doris, and if those secrets kind of add some nuance or some uh, give me an insight into why these men are kind of all people I wouldn't want to have a beer with, <laughs> that might be a successful story, but based on the rotten luck we've been having recently. I'm feeling, I'm really pushing myself to stay optimistic, but we shall see. Now, there's some interesting Irish slang or Irish words here that I didn't know. And there was this one reference, and, and that made me curious because it was the first reference to this recently deceased uncle having a wife when they're driving down to the funeral. And the one, son says herself that's the aunt herself and mother never pulled well in context i could figure out that meant they never got along i i guess jason help me out here but my favorite sentence in the story is the son home from saudi arabia his name is philly he is so bored in, that he just goes to the pub every day like in the after lunch or something and when he sits down, the bartender offers him the paper, and Philly says, Are you sure you're finished with it? I wish I could do that in an Irish brogue. The bartender says, I've the complete arse read out of it since the morning. I love that. <laughs> so, other than that, the writing is just fine. Uh, nothing special. So, yeah, I've gone on for longer than I intended to, but what did you think, Doris? Are you more optimistic? Can you uh, raise, raise my spirits? I I'm not pessimistic, but uh, I'm just not fully invested in the story with such a cast of unlikable men. I look forward to hearing from you and then checking back with you after I've the complete arse read out of this story. Well, Sean, I gotta say, I'm feeling rather pessimistic about this one, and that is because I have not been wowed thus far. And also because, as you say, we've had quite a few duds recently in this series from Faber. So, yeah. Um, like the wow factor, I just don't feel like I've gotten much of a sense of place in this story yet. Now, it is a longer short story. We have already read 19 pages, um, but it is a longer one, so possibly... Um, I am here for a road trip among brothers and heading out into the country. I'm always here for the country scenes, so possibly it's going to pull it out here, uh, in the story, but one little thing that just really irritated me in the opening flap, it says, my only concern, John McCarran once said, is that I get the sentence right and describe my world clearly and deeply. So, you know, that sentence that you read us about the arse, you know, with the newspaper was charming. It was really funny. Um, however, just before that is the sentence that made me bonkers. On page three, at the bottom, as soon as the barman in Mulligan's had pulled his pint, he offered Philly the newspaper spread out on the counter that he had been reading. <laughs> he offered Philly the newspaper spread out on the counter that he had been reading. He wasn't reading the counter, friends. He was reading the newspaper. I mean, logically, yes, but it's not written correctly. <laughs> It's written like a poorly phrased sentence that, you know, would be in a high school grammar textbook and spot the error. So, yeah, that annoyed me. It's the little things, you know. I don't know why things like that pull me out of the story, but they do every time. I cannot stand misplaced phrasing like that. Anyway, 
fingers crossed for the rest of this story. Check in soon. Hey, Doris. Well, I have the complete arse. I have the complete art. I have the complete arse read out of it since you and I last spoke, and I set set it aside for almost a week. So I just picked it back up and did a fairly slow skim of the ending. I really like this one. This one really worked for me. It's not perfect, and really, all I have for you is my inarticulateness about it. I thought there was something powerful and subterranean about the way that it explored inheritance, money, property, community, and brotherhood, or lack thereof, in this story. Underneath all the crazy shenanigans, the drinking and the rivalry between the brothers and the no love being lost between them and their uncle, there was something really deep that I felt was being said and the only way it could be said is in this peculiar, particular story. So I really liked it. I haven't decided on my star reading. I am leaning towards somewhere between a four and a five. And when we publish this video, I will decide finally. But those are my inarticulate thoughts. How about you? Hey, Sean. So I guess it's been a couple weeks since I finished this book and... I tried to do the slow skim method as you did, but the honest truth is I'm just not interested. So I wasn't remembering all that much except that it's a bunch of brothers attending their somewhat estranged uncle's funeral. And you know, yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't have anything to say. I, I would call it a three star. It just didn't spark my interest. I don't think it's a bad book. It just wasn't a me book. So glad you enjoyed it though. We'll have to do a tally at the end and see, um, our ratio. We're almost there. One more of this first release. Wow. It's been a year. Anyway, thanks so much for watching everyone. And We'll be back again soon. Bye.